Hello, and welcome to the new episode of the Better Times Wagonex Newsreel. Yes, I'm used to a lot of things, but what has happened in the past week and a half, I have to say, that was violent. So no sooner had the manifesto, initiated by Alice Schwarzer and myself, been published, when we, together with 69 renowned first signatories from all areas of social life, advocated negotiations instead of tanks, then a gasp began to take hold in large parts of the German public and the media. Since then, according to all the rules of art, an attempt has been made to discredit us either as naive, dangerous, amoral, cynical, or even as paid Kremlin propagandists. And since it became clear that people are not going to be impressed by this scolding cannonade, and in the first week alone, half a million people signed our manifesto for peace. And at this point, once again, my heartfelt thanks to each of you who has already signed. And if you haven't signed yet, make sure to catch up. In the video description, you will find the link to our petition. So since you realized, that people are not intimidated by all the howling, yes, it got even more violent. That's when the ultimate club was brought out. Now the demand for peace and negotiations is suddenly open to the right, and we are allegedly making a pact with the aft. I have to say, the level of this debate is really hard to beat. It's always the same. If the aft says the sky is blue, then, of course, all pure Democrats must claim that it is green, and anyone who does not participate in this nonsense is legally open and must be cancelled. Guys, is it still possible? A special stumbling block for many is apparently our big peace rally on Saturday, 14 o'clock in Berlin at the Brandenburg Gate. All conceivable guns are now being fired up, right up to the horror story, that is allegedly being mobilized like crazy in far-right networks for our rally. Of course, this is nonsense, and it is also clear that neo-Nazis and Reich citizens, who are in the tradition of a regime that has launched the most murderous war in human memory, so that such guys have no business at a peace rally. But beyond such journeymen, it is completely clear that everyone is welcome who would like to demonstrate with an honest heart, with us for peace, for negotiations instead of tanks. Yes, what else is there? And that's why my request, let all the rabble-rousers look old. Come to Berlin by the thousands on Saturday, and let's send a very strong signal for peace. The more honest friends of peace will be on the square, the sooner possible provocations will come to naught because it is likely that they will exist, if only because there is obviously an extraordinarily great interest in certain circles. This is shown by the foam at the mouth of our opponents, to absolutely prevent the emergence of a new strong peace movement in Germany. Therefore, don't let these stupid debates get you into boxing. We are thousands, and we will not let a few nutters or even provocateurs on the square take away our fundamental right to freedom of assembly and if someone comes to you with the accusation of openness to the law yes then confidently ask back how our critics can actually reconcile it with their supposedly so army democratic attitude to seek an alliance with people who worship real nazis as national heroes i am thinking for example of the former rupel ambassador and current Deputy Foreign Minister of Ukraine Andrei Melnik, who, out of his veneration for the Nazi collaborator Stefan Bandera, who, after all, is partly responsible for the murder of thousands of Jews and Poles, who makes no secret of his veneration for such a person at all. So if something is open to the right these days, then probably also the pact with such people. Or, what about the Ukrainian writer, who scolds the Russians as pigs and rubbish, and was honored with the Peace Prize of the German book trade. In gratitude for this, Claudia Roth and Saskia Eskin were sitting in the room and clapping applause. So, open to the right, 
there would still be the kindest description that would occur to me about such processes so if the war drummers are outraged about legal openness they should take a hold of their own nose but in this newsreel i would also like to once again address the objections that are repeatedly raised against the demand for a peace initiative by the west and for negotiations is this really unworldly naive blue-eyed because putin doesn't want to negotiate at all because he just gave another war speech this week yes if the demand for negotiations is naive and unworldly then apparently the brazilian president lula weltfrim is also unworldly who coolly dismissed shoals and his demand for participation in the arms deliveries and called for a peace initiative instead then the pope is naive and unworldly who has been trying to do exactly that for a long time then the chinese are naive and unworldly who are now also demanding negotiations and since we are talking about russia's allies here one should actually assume that they once asked in moscow whether negotiations were desired at all and whether they had a certain prospect of success and then even the us army think tank the rand corporation is naive and unworldly because even this rand corporation recently published a study which firstly soberly states that the idea of a ukrainian victory with the recapture of all the territories that russia has appropriated is unrealistic the second argues that the war must be ended quickly if only because the risk of a nuclear escalation in the course of the war is very high and therefore calls on american president joe biden to stop betting on a war of attrition that may last four years which is being armed with more and more weapons but instead to work towards a negotiated solution and a compromise and the rand corporation specifically criticizes that the two governments i quote have not yet taken any steps to push the parties to talk does this sound familiar to you in any way yes so is the rand corporation now also unworldly naive or even paid by the kremlin if it considers negotiations as a possible indeed the only realistic way to a quick end to the war i really have to say the level of debate in this country is really an insult to our intelligence and that brings us back to the point raised next time would putin be willing to negotiate at all probably not on the basis of the demand to withdraw his troops from the entire donbass and crimea as a precondition for talks as is repeatedly demanded you may wish that but real politic is something different than the game wishes you something and anyone who sets completely unrealistic conditions of course makes power negotiations impossible and maybe that's what he wants with it too but if the west would signal to the russian leadership to accommodate nato membership and possible american military bases and missile bases on ukrainian territory on the crucial issue for them if there was a willingness to freeze the front line first of all and decide on the future of the occupied territories by negotiation after a ceasefire i am not a kremlin astrologer and of course I cannot say for sure how Putin would react to such an offer. But what I know for sure is, it is irresponsible not to at least try to get back into the conversation on this way. And anyone who now comes up with the manslaughter argument that one should not negotiate with an aggressor, or one should not yet reward Putin for his war of aggression, I ask him back what is actually more important to punish Putin or to end a terrible war to which hundreds of people fall victim every day and which carries the danger of expanding into a third world war and there is still a point where it is said again and again yes freezing the front that's not possible at all then all the war crimes and rapes and killings continue what is this theory war crimes are part of the war if the weapons are silent then unobservers can return to the territories and unfortunately the truth also includes rapes torture arbitrary killings they didn't just start with the russian invasion of ukraine 
The Uncommissioner for Human Rights has previously documented exactly such atrocities in the Donbass, committed by the Asov Battalion at that time. That doesn't relativize and justify it anyway. It doesn't relativize the Russian war crimes. Of course not. Crime is crime, and this is deeply condemnable. But it is quite clear who wants this suffering and these crimes to stop. He has to end this war. He has to make sure that the guns are silent. There is no other way. And the fact that Russia was willing to negotiate in the spring, according to the unanimous statement of Israeli Prime Minister Bennett and the Turkish Foreign Minister, who had both tried to mediate peace talks, speaks in favor of a Russian willingness to negotiate. After all, that the Russian leadership at that time was not only willing to negotiate, but even very willing to compromise, as the two at least represent it. After all, the negotiations failed at that time, not because of Russia's unwillingness, and, by the way, not because of Ukraine's unwillingness either. The negotiations failed at that time because the West blocked the progress, because London and Washington in particular simply had no interest in a quick conclusion of peace. Let's listen to this. כי ירד מהצטרפות לנאטו, הוא אמר אני, אני מוותר על זה. אלה צעדים אדירים של כל צעד. אדירים, ויתורים מאוד גדולים. יצ... המלחמה כולה קרתה בגלל הדרישה להיכנס לנאטו, ובא זלנסקי ואומר אני יורד מזה. אני בסך הכל כן. אה, מוציא לפועל ומתווך, אבל אני, ה- הכתובת שלי זה אמריקה בעניין הזה. ואני לא פועל על דעת עצמי. כל פעולה שעשיתי הייתה מתואמת ל- לפרטי פרטים, גם עם ארה״ב, גם עם גרמניה, גם עם צרפת. אז הם בעצם חדלו את זה? בגדול, כן. בגדול הם חדלו את זה, ובאותו זמן חשבתי שהם שוגים. Yes, the West has blocked a possible ceasefire, according to Prime Minister Bennett. And the West is clearly doing this to this day. And incidentally, The fact that there have always been successful negotiations on detailed issues also speaks in favor of Russian willingness to negotiate, be it about the grain agreement or about prisoner exchanges. And even now, Biden's trip to Kiev, of course, was preceded by agreements with Russia to ensure the safety of the American president. And that's why time is running out. The West needs to change its strategy. While Melnik is already cheering on the fact that Germany will soon also supply fighter jets, the risk of a confrontation between the nuclear powers is increasing. The Unsecretary General Guterish has explicitly warned that the world is moving into a great war with its eyes wide open. After all, this is not Russian propaganda. This is a very real danger. And that is why Guterish is also demanding what we are also demanding. We must work harder for peace, everywhere, but you don't do that with tanks. You do that with diplomacy. The nuclear war clock, which indicates how close the world is to a nuclear one in the distance, has recently moved further forward. She is now at 90 seconds to 12. The world has never been so close to the threshold of a nuclear war as it is today. And what do the war drummers and gun lobbyists have to offer as an alternative? The alleged military victory of Ukraine, which would allow the situation to come to an acute point, of which Kennedy already warned at the time. Namely, that a nuclear power gets into a situation where it only has the choice between a humiliating retreat and the use of nuclear weapons. Do you want to, to take a serious risk and leave it at that? Yes. And what is the other way of the gun drummers? The other way is a war of attrition lasting four years with hundreds of thousands more victims, which would turn Ukraine into a completely destroyed, depopulated country, and at the end of which negotiations would still have to be held at some point. What are these alternatives? No, we need talks instead of howls of war. Russia will not disappear from the map, and Putin too, in all likelihood, will for some time yet be president. Should the war continue for so long? Should people suffer and die for so long? You can't seriously represent that, and that's why it doesn't matter what you think of Putin and whether you condemn his actions. I do too, but there is only one way. There is only the way of negotiation if the war is not to go on endlessly. And fortunately, more and more people see it that way, despite the constant media fire. And that's why the gun lobbyists and war advocates 
are obviously afraid of our movement but even more so let's move on let's get even stronger and louder i hope to see most of you at the brandenburg gate on saturday fourteen o'clock that's it for today feel free to write me in the comments again how do you see that how do you also experience this debate so i have to say i was really shocked by the level of many posts so i'm used to being criticized and i think that's normal too in a democratic discourse you also have to criticize yourself you have to exchange arguments it's okay but please not on this level of insults of insults how did you see that and above all what do you wish for do you belong to the half of the population that says it must not go on like this because we are afraid or do you think that everything will be fine and ukraine will win so i'm curious write to me in the comments how you see this and above all make a firm entry saturday fourteen o'clock at the brandenburg gate until then